Question 1. What's the main hazard shown in this picture? B. The cyclist crossing the road. Look at the picture carefully and try to imagine you're there. The cyclist in this picture appears to be trying to cross the road. You must be able to deal with the unexpected, especially when you're approaching a hazardous junction. Look well ahead to give yourself time to deal with any hazards. Question 2. What should you do if a driver pulls out of a side road in front of you, causing you to brake hard? B. Ignore the error and stay calm. Be tolerant if a vehicle emerges and you have to brake quickly. Anyone can make a mistake, so don't react aggressively. Be alert where there are side roads and be especially careful where there are parked vehicles, because these can make it difficult for emerging drivers to see you. Question 3. You're waiting to turn right out of a minor road. It's clear to the left but a lorry is coming from the right. Why should you wait, even if you have enough time to turn? A. Anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view. Large vehicles can hide other vehicles that are overtaking, especially motorcycles. You need to be aware of the possibility of hidden vehicles and not assume that it's safe to turn. Question 4. Which plate may appear with this road sign? A. Road humps are used to slow down traffic. They're found in places where there are often pedestrians, such as, shopping areas, near schools, residential areas. Watch out for people close to the curb or crossing the road. Question 5. What's the national speed limit on motorways for cars and motorcycles? D. 70 miles per hour. Traveling at the national speed limit doesn't allow you to hug the right-hand lane. Always use the left-hand lane whenever possible. When leaving a motorway, get into the left-hand lane well before your exit. Reduce your speed on the slip road and look out for sharp bends or curves and traffic queuing at roundabouts. Question 6. Which vehicles aren't allowed to use the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway? D. Vehicles towing a trailer. On the motorway, any vehicle towing a trailer is restricted to 60 miles per hour. It isn't allowed in the right-hand lane, as it might hold up faster-moving traffic that wishes to overtake in that lane. Question 7. You're traveling along a motorway. Where would you find a crawler or climbing lane? D. On a steep gradient. Large, slow-moving vehicles can hinder the progress of other traffic. On a steep gradient, an extra crawler lane may be provided for slow-moving vehicles to allow faster-moving traffic to flow more easily. Question 8. What does this sign mean? B. No right turn. The no right turn sign may be used to warn road users that there's a no entry prohibition on a road to the right ahead. Question 9. You're about to overtake. What should you do when you see this sign? A. 
away, hold back until you can see clearly ahead. You won't be able to see any hazards that might be hidden in the dip. As well as oncoming traffic, the dip may conceal, cyclists, horse riders, parked vehicles, pedestrians in the road. Question 10. What do these zigzag white lines mean? A. No parking at any time. The approach to, and exit from, a pedestrian crossing is marked with zigzag lines. You mustn't park on them or overtake the leading vehicle when approaching the crossing. Parking here would block the view for pedestrians and approaching traffic. Question 11. What does this motorway sign mean? C. Temporary maximum speed 50 miles per hour. Look out for signs above your lane or on the central reservation. These will give you important information or warnings about the road ahead. To allow for the high speed of motorway traffic, these signs may light up some distance from any hazard. Don't ignore the signs just because the road looks clear to you. Question 12. What does this sign indicate? B. A diversion route. When a diversion route has been put in place, drivers are advised to follow a symbol, which may be a black triangle, square, circle or diamond shape on a yellow background. Question 13. What color are the reflective studs between the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane of the motorway? C. Red. Red studs are placed between the edge of the carriageway and the hard shoulder. Where slip roads leave or join the motorway, the studs are green. Question 14. You're on a three-lane motorway. Which lane are you in if there are red reflective studs on your left and white ones to your right? A. In the left-hand lane. The colors of the reflective studs on the motorway and their locations are, red, between the hard shoulder and the carriageway, white, between lanes, amber, between the carriageway and the central reservation, green, along slip road exits and entrances, bright green slash yellow, at roadworks and contraflow systems. Question 15. You're looking for somewhere to safely park your vehicle. Where would you choose to park? B. In a designated parking space. It may be tempting to park where you shouldn't while you run a quick errand. Careless parking is a selfish act and could endanger other road users. Question 16. When may you sound your vehicle's horn? D. To warn others of your presence. Never sound your vehicle's horn aggressively. You mustn't sound it when driving in a built-up area between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m., or when you're stationary, unless another road user poses a danger. Don't scare animals by sounding your horn. Question 17. Why are place names painted on the road surface? A. To help you select the correct lane in good time. 
The names of towns and cities may be painted on the road at busy junctions and complex road systems. They guide you into the correct lane in good time, allowing traffic to flow more freely. Question 18. What should you do when you're following a motorcyclist along a road that has a poor surface? A. Allow extra room in case they swerve to avoid potholes. To avoid being unbalanced, a motorcyclist might swerve to avoid potholes and bumps in the road. Be prepared for this and allow them extra space. Question 19. You're in the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. What do these overhead signs mean? B. Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles per hour. You must obey these signs even if there appear to be no problems ahead. There could be queuing traffic or another hazard that you can't see yet. Question 20. You're traveling along a motorway. When are you allowed to overtake on the left? A. When in queues and traffic to your right is moving more slowly than you are. Never overtake on the left, unless the traffic is moving in queues and the queue on your right is moving more slowly than the one you're in. Question 21. What does this sign mean? C. Mini Roundabout When you see this sign, look out for any direction signs and judge whether you need to signal your intentions. Do this in good time so that other road users approaching the roundabout know what you're planning to do. Question 22. What's a statutory off-road notification, SORN? A. A notification to tell TVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. If you want to keep a vehicle untaxed and off the public road, you must make a SORN. It's an offense not to do so. Your SORN is valid until your vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. Question 23. What can you expect if you drive using rapid acceleration and heavy braking? A. Increased fuel consumption. Using the controls smoothly can reduce fuel consumption by about 15%, as well as reducing wear and tear on your vehicle. Plan ahead and anticipate changes of speed well in advance. This will reduce the need to accelerate rapidly or brake sharply. Question 24. You stop on the hard shoulder of a motorway and use the emergency telephone. Where's the best place to wait for help to arrive? C. Well away from the carriageway. When you're on the hard shoulder, you're at risk of being injured by motorway traffic. The safest place to wait is away from the carriageway, but near enough to see the emergency services arriving. Question 25. What does this signal from a police officer mean to non-coming traffic? B. Stop. Police officers may need to direct traffic, for example, at a junction where the traffic lights have broken down. Check your copy of the highway code for the signals that they use. Question 26. 
you arrive at the scene of a crash where someone is bleeding heavily from a wound in their arm. Nothing is embedded in the wound. What could you do to help? A. Apply pressure over the wound. If possible, lay the casualty down. Protect yourself from exposure to blood and, when you're sure there's nothing in the wound, apply firm pressure using clean material. Question 27. A casualty isn't breathing normally and needs CPR. At what rate should you press down and release on the center of their chest? B. 120 times per minute. If a casualty isn't breathing normally, cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, may be needed to maintain circulation. Place two hands on the center of the chest and press down hard and fast, around 5 to 6 centimeters and about twice a second. Question 28. When must your vehicle have valid insurance cover? D. Before you can tax the vehicle. Your vehicle must have valid insurance cover before you can tax it. If required, it will also need to have a valid MO certificate. You can tax your vehicle online, by phone or at certain post offices. Question 29. What do you need before you can legally use a motor vehicle on the road? B. An appropriate driving license. Using a motor vehicle on the road illegally carries a heavy fine and can lead to penalty points on your driving license. You must hold a valid driving license for the class of vehicle you're using be insured to drive the vehicle. If required, the vehicle must have a current motest certificate and be taxed for use on the road. Question 30. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? B. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. To go straight ahead at a roundabout, you should normally approach in the left-hand lane, but check the road markings. At some roundabouts, the left lane on approach is marked left turn only, so make sure you use the correct lane to go ahead. You won't normally need to signal as you approach, but signal before you leave the roundabout, as other road users need to know your intentions. Question 31. A police officer asks to see your documents. You don't have them with you. How many days do you have to produce them at a police station? D. 7 days. You don't have to carry your vehicle's documents wherever you go. If a police officer asks to see them and you don't have them with you, you may be asked to produce them at a police station within seven days. Question 32. An adult casualty isn't breathing. To maintain circulation, CPR should be given. What's the correct depth to press down on their chest? D. 5 to 6 centimeters. An adult casualty isn't breathing normally. To maintain circulation, place two hands on the center of the chest. Then press down hard and fast, around 5 to 6 centimeters and about twice a second. Question 33. What could cause you to crash if the level is allowed to get too low? D. 
C. Brake fluid level. You should carry out frequent checks on all fluid levels but particularly brake fluid. As the brake pads or shoes wear down, the brake fluid level will drop. If it drops below the minimum mark on the fluid reservoir, air could enter the hydraulic system and lead to a loss of braking efficiency or even complete brake failure. Question 34. You're following other vehicles in fog. You have your headlights on dipped beam. What else can you do to reduce the chances of being in a collision? A. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. When it's foggy, use your headlights on dipped beam. This will help you see and be seen by other road users. If visibility is seriously reduced, consider using front and rear fog lights if you have them. Keep to a sensible speed and don't follow the vehicle in front too closely. If the road is wet and slippery, you'll need to allow twice the normal stopping distance. Question 35. A collision has just happened. An injured person is lying in a busy road. What's the first thing you should do? D. Warn other traffic. The most immediate danger is further collisions and fire. You could warn other traffic by switching on hazard warning lights, displaying an advance warning triangle or sign, but not on the motorway, or by any other means that doesn't put you or others at risk. Question 36. What's the main benefit of driving a four-wheel drive vehicle? A. Improved grip on the road. By driving all four wheels, the vehicle has maximum grip on the road. This grip is especially helpful when traveling on slippery or uneven surfaces. However, having four-wheel drive doesn't replace the skills you need to drive safely. Question 37. You're driving towards this level crossing. What would be the first warning of an approaching train? A. A steady amber light. The steady amber light will be followed by twin flashing red lights that mean you must stop. An alarm will also sound to alert you to the fact that a train is approaching. Question 38. You're driving on a road with several lanes. What do these signs above the lanes mean? A. The two left lanes are open. On some busy roads, lane control signals are used to vary the number of lanes available to give priority to the main traffic flow. A green arrow indicates that the lane is available to traffic facing the signal. A white diagonal arrow means that the lane is closed ahead and traffic should move to the next lane on the left. A red cross means that the lane is closed to traffic facing the signal. Question 39. What advice should you give to a driver who has had a few alcoholic drinks at a party? B. Go home by public transport. Drinking black coffee or waiting a few hours won't make any difference. Alcohol takes time to leave the body. A driver who has been drinking should go home by public transport or taxi. They might even be unfit to drive the following morning. Question 40. You're about to reverse into a side road. What should you do if a pedestrian is waiting to cross behind your car? A. Give way to the pedestrian. 
If you need to reverse into a side road, try to find a place that's free from traffic and pedestrians. Look all around before and during the maneuver. Stop and give way to any pedestrians who want to cross behind you. Avoid waving them across, sounding the horn, flashing your lights or giving any signals that could mislead them and create a dangerous situation. Question 41. You're waiting at a level crossing. What should you do if the red warning lights continue to flash after a train has passed by? A. Continue to wait. At a level crossing, flashing red lights mean you must stop. If the train passes but the lights keep flashing, wait. Another train may be coming. Question 42. How should you give an arm signal to turn left? C. There may be occasions when other road users are unable to see your indicator, such as in bright sunlight or at a busy, complicated junction. In these cases, an arm signal will help others to understand your intentions. Question 43. What's most likely to waste fuel? C. Underinflated tires. Wasting fuel costs you money and also causes unnecessary pollution. Ensuring your tires are correctly inflated, avoiding carrying unnecessary weight and removing a roof rack that's not in use will all help to reduce your fuel consumption. Question 44. How can you reduce the damage your vehicle causes to the environment? A. Anticipate well ahead. By looking well ahead and recognizing hazards in good time, you can avoid late and heavy braking. Watch the traffic flow and look well ahead for potential hazards so you can control your speed in good time. Avoid over revving the engine and accelerating harshly, as this increases wear to the engine and uses more fuel. Question 45. Why should you allow extra room while overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? A. The rider may be blown in front of you. If you're driving in high winds, be aware that the conditions might make a motorcyclist, or cyclist, swerve or wobble. Take this into consideration if you're following or wish to overtake a two-wheeled vehicle. Question 46. What can seriously reduce your ability to concentrate? B. Drugs. Both recreational drugs and prescribed medicine can affect your concentration. It's also an offense to drive with certain drugs in your body and a positive test could lead to a conviction. Question 47. Why is it bad technique to coast when you're driving downhill? D. The vehicle will gain speed more quickly. Coasting is when you allow the vehicle to freewheel in neutral or with the clutch pedal depressed. When traveling downhill, this will cause the vehicle to gain speed more quickly as you lose the benefits of engine braking. It may even lead to a loss of control. You shouldn't coast, especially when approaching hazards such as junctions or bends and when traveling downhill. Question 48. When may a passenger travel in a car without wearing a seat belt? A. 
pay, when they're exempt for medical reasons. If you have adult passengers, it's their responsibility to wear a seat belt, but you should still remind them to use one as they get in the car. It's your responsibility to make sure that all children in your car are secured with an appropriate restraint. Exemptions are allowed for those with a medical exemption certificate. Question 49. What should you do if you start to feel drowsy while you're driving on a motorway? A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. Never stop on the hard shoulder to rest. If there's no service area for several miles, leave the motorway at the next exit and find somewhere safe and legal to pull over. Question 50. What does it mean if the electronic stability control, escape, indicator lamp lights up while you're driving? B. The escape system has activated. Escape is a computer-controlled technology that detects reduced traction and automatically makes corrective adjustments to prevent loss of control. The escape lamp comes on to alert the driver that the system has activated and the car is approaching its handling limits. It's a powerful driver aid but it cannot save a car once its traction limits have been exceeded. If you learn DVSA theory test in proper way, you can download theory test app from the app store link in the description. Thanks for watching the video.